The new Raptor D2023.6 allows you to capture 4D sequences from just two cameras mounted on a helmet. To make it possible, we've created a new image facial wrapping tool. It doesn't require computing a 3D scan for every frame. Instead, it solves the problem in the image space by trying to fit the model, the texture, and the lighting until the result matches the images from the cameras as closely as possible. For this pipeline, we need four types of data. First is a facial performance sequence captured with two synchronized cameras on the HMC. The actor needs to have a sparse set of markers on their face. You can use an arbitrary marker layout and even change the layout between the shooting days. Second is a checkerboard calibration sequence which is used to calibrate the cameras. You can record it before or after the shooting. Third is a set of expressions of the actor captured in a photogrammetry rig. These expressions are used to understand the space of deformation of every part of the actor's face. Though the final result is not a linear combination of these shapes, each expression should be wrapped with the same topology and stabilized before feeding into the pipeline. Finally, we need a daily scan captured on the day of the HMC recording. The daily scan should have the same set of markers that were used during the performance capture. It provides information on where each marker is located on the 3D surface of the actor's face. The daily scan doesn't have to be perfect. You can use photogrammetry, an iPhone, or a handheld camera to scan it. Having this input data, we can process an HMC performance in several steps. For each step, we provide a corresponding sample project in the wrap for d gallery. In the first step, we take a daily scan and assign each marker a unique name. The named markers will be used later during the tracking process. In the second step, we need to calibrate the cameras using a new stereo camera calibration tool. After the calibration is complete, we can import the cameras into RAP4D. The third step is to find where the face is located relative to the cameras of the HMC. We provide a set of corresponding points between the camera images and the 3D model. Then the Align Geome to Cameras node finds the transformation from the stabilized expression space to the HMC space. In the fourth step, we track the facial markers on the top and the bottom camera images using the track application. And this is one of the most labor-intensive steps of the processing. Some markers are tracked fully automatically. For other markers, we need to manually specify when the markers are lost or occluded. The fifth step is the detection of lip and eyelid contours in track. In this step, we need to manually pick a set of frames from the HMC performance that contain extreme facial expressions or visenes. For these training frames, we manually annotate lip and eyelid contours. Using these training frames, the detector automatically predicts the contours for every frame of the footage. This is the second most labor-intensive step that should only be done for one view. On the facial annotation step, we need to specify where the lip and eyelid contours are located on our topology. We also need to provide selections for different parts of the lips. The image facial wrapping step is the heart of the 4D processing pipeline. This is where we bring together all the tracking data that we've prepared. The node doesn't require computing a 3D scan for every frame. Instead, we solve the problem in the image space. The method deforms the model, adjusts the texture, and optimizes the lighting until it matches the image from the camera as closely as possible. Every frame is computed independently of each other. The computation takes roughly 5 to 10 minutes per frame depending on the parameters, so we normally run it on multiple machines on a farm. The next step is called guidable head stabilization. The HMC doesn't always sit stable on the actor's head. Due to the head motions, the cameras and the helmet may shake leading to a badly stabilized mesh sequence. The guidable head stabilization node uses a set of stabilized facial expressions from the photogrammetry rig as training data to understand how to stabilize any unseen frame. In the guidable replace step, we analyze a visible part of the face to predict how the rest of the mesh looks in a particular expression. The node uses a set of stabilized fax expressions from the photogrammetry rig as training data for the prediction. It produces plausible ear movements when the actor smiles, or a neck stretch when the actor makes a rage expression. In the guidable texture step, we take a set of stabilized fax expressions and corresponding color textures from the photogrammetry rig and use it as training data to predict the texture for every frame of the sequence. Note how the result on the right is more realistic than applying a static neutral texture to the entire sequence. Similar to the previous step, the guidable delta mush node takes a set of detailed and high poly fax meshes from the photogrammetry as training data and increases the resolution of every frame of the HMC sequence. In the guidable mesh step, we use a set of training examples of where the lower teeth are located for every fax expression to plausibly predict the teeth position for unseen frames. The next three steps are designed to produce accurate eye tracking. In the eye texture projection step, our goal is to produce a pair of realistic eye textures that we will later match versus real images from the cameras. The fit eye direction node uses the texture created in the previous step and optimizes for the eyeball rotation to match it pixel to pixel with the camera image. As a result of this step, we have accurate gaze tracking for all the frames except the ones where the eyelids are closed. The interpolate eye step uses the result of the eyelid contour detection to automatically find all the frame ranges where the eyelids are closed below the specified threshold. 
For these frames, the node linearly interpolates the eyeball rotations between the values on the border of the ranges producing a plausible eye animation at the transition moments when the actor opens and closes the eyelids. The last step of the pipeline adds the final touch to the animated mesh that we produced. The Keep Distance node makes sure that the eyelids are always in contact with the eyeball surface and that there are no gaps between them. The Fix Intersections node automatically resolves the lip intersections in the animated mesh sequence. Even though it's a little change to the mesh, the result of this step is pretty noticeable on the render. This is how the 4D processing pipeline works. Each step has a dedicated tutorial and a sample project that you can play with. Find out more about the new release at our website. See you and stay tuned for more updates.